What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. For this week we're going to be doing a C4 explosive. And really quickly I just want to give a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed and helped support the channel. So let's just get started. Alright, so to start things off, I'm going to select the cube and start blocking out the main shapes. Now, I'm going to start off with the C4s themselves, just because they're the largest objects in the scene. It'll be a lot easier for me to add all the other smaller objects afterwards once these two C4s are in place. So to start things off, I'm going to bevel out some of my edges, and then I can add a few edge loops just to create some more polys on my C4. Then I can enter soft select mode by pressing B on my keyboard, and if I click anywhere in my 3D space while holding down B and dragging, I can basically change the size of the radius that my soft select's gonna interact with. So depending on how many vertices are inside of that radius, they're gonna interact with that object when I move it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and deform the shape a little bit just by adding some little indents just so it doesn't look so perfect and it's going to help make the object look a little bit more realistic when we add our materials later on in substance so let's go ahead and start deforming the shape a little bit and then we'll start adding in a few other objects Alright, so now that I have one of the C4s roughly done in shape, I can just duplicate it over to create a second one that I'm going to slide over right beside it. Alright, so next up is creating that little chip card that sits on top of the C4s that all these little wires are going to be connected to. So I'm going to start off with another cube and then we can start blocking out these shapes. So for the next little bit, I'm just going to let it play out as all I'm doing is just basically selecting cubes and cylinders and scaling them really small and just creating these little chip card pieces that I'm going to place all over this front face of this chip card. So let's go ahead and start creating these shapes.
All right, so the chip card is complete or temporarily complete. We're just gonna move on to start adding in some other objects. So I'm gonna start off with those little sticks that stick into the top of the C4. So I was basically following a reference from the movie Die Hard with Bruce Willis. He was basically used a little stick of C4, if anyone's seen the movie, and he basically punches through the wrapper with these little metal, little sticks basically with these wires coming out of them. So I wanted to create something similar to that that had these little holes. Now, you could get away not adding polys and actually adding booleans and just faking it directly on the materials, especially for lower poly models. You could just add some little black holes and you probably wouldn't even be able to tell, but because this is a little bit of a higher poly model, I thought we would just create those holes directly into the mesh. So I'm gonna create some lower poly cylinders that are gonna act as those little holes. I'm gonna place them on the top, combine them into one object, and then I can Boolean out some holes. Once those booleans are created, I can go in with my target weld tool and with the multi-cut tool and start adding in and attaching those vertices. And then when I hit three on my keyboard to smooth it out, hopefully everything is gonna hold together and we'll have some nice booleaned holes. So let's start creating these shapes. All right, so now that we have those holes in place, I'm just gonna create a little bit more detail around where those little holes are created. I'm just imagining if you took those little metal sticks and you puncture through the wrapper, it wouldn't be so clean, like a perfectly clean cut circle. So all I'm gonna do is select some of the faces around the circles, delete them so I can double click those edges and extrude them upwards, just to create a little bit of that packaging. Basically, imagining that if you puncture through this wrapper, some of the wrapper material would kind of be a little bit messy around where that hole is created. So I'm just gonna create some extra polys by extruding them upwards and just moving things around just so I can hopefully bring a little bit more realism to the model. Now I'm just gonna do this to one of the holes just to show exactly what I'm gonna be doing. And then I'm gonna do the exact same process after when I do the UVing to all of the other holes in the scene. So let's go ahead and we can start just messing around with the shape a little bit. And keep in mind, I'm basically experimenting along the way. I don't really know exactly how I wanna show this and what's gonna work best. So you'll see me constantly just hitting three on my keyboard to smooth it out to see what the shape's looking like and then going back and moving vertices around and just hopping back and forth. So it's a little bit of experimenting, but let's just keep moving things around until I find something that I'm happy with. All right, so now that we have a little metal stick in place, I'm gonna go ahead and start duplicating these into the other holes and just changing their positions and angles just so they're a little bit different from one another. All 
Alright, so next up is creating all those little wires that connect from these little metal sticks into that chipboard. So I'm going to do that with an EP curve tool and then switching that into a sweet mesh to create the actual little wire. So let's go ahead with the EP curve tool and start positioning these points into the shape of the wire. And now for this first one, I wanted to do something a little bit extra and kind of bunch them together like they're knotted in one section and then kind of looped and tied together in another. So I'm just gonna add a bunch of these points and then start playing around with these vertices until I get them in the shape that I'm happy with. And I'm gonna constantly be jumping into that sweet mesh to see what it looks like and then coming back to move some of those vertices around and just repeating that process until I find something that I'm happy with. So let's go ahead and start creating this first wire. Alright, so the first wire is in place and it's looking pretty good so we can move on to start doing all of the other ones. So I'm just going to repeat the exact same process I just did with the EP Curve tool and then Sweet Mesh and just recreate all the other wires in the scene. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Alright, so the wires are wrapped up, now we can jump on to the other little accessories. So we're going to do the battery pack first, which is just basically a small little cube, and then a little switch and trigger on the side. So let's go create a few cubes and we can start blocking out those shapes.
and just like we did the other wires, we're going to create another EP curve tool so I can create another sweet mesh for the wire that connects the trigger to the switchboard. Alright, so next up was tackling the tape that wraps around all these objects to hold them together. So I'm going to create a small plane, take down those divisions to make them really small, we don't need any polys, and I can start blocking out the tape shape. So all I'm going to do is just basically select one edge, and then start extruding that around to basically wrap the tape around all the objects. Now I'm not going to worry about making it too high in poly, since we're still adding objects to the scene, I don't want to finalize the stage, I can always finalize that at the very end just by smoothing out the object or just adding more polys and beveling out some of these edges. So all I'm going to do is just make hard cuts or hard extrusions right where the corners would interact with different objects. So I'm going to keep it really low poly and blocked out for now and we'll increase the polys down the road. So let's start off modeling out that first piece of tape. Alright, so those two pieces of tape are blocked out, now I'm just going to jump back to the other models that are already in the scene and start just tweaking some of these objects and adding in a few small little details. Like I want to add a little antenna on the trigger and a few extra wires like one from the back of the battery that goes to the chipboard and a few other small little details. So let's start adding in a few small things and then we can start finalizing the model.
Alright, so things are coming together. I'm just going to really quickly do the exact same thing I did to that first C4 package. I'm going to boolean out some holes and create some little metal sticks with wires. And I'm just going to do it to the other one on the left that I haven't done them to. So I'm just going to fast forward ahead to one that's already done since I already showed the exact same process. Just so I can speed the video up a little bit and make it a little bit shorter. And boom, just like that we have updated our other C4 package. Alright, so the model is looking a little bit better now, I just want to add in a little something extra. So while looking online at different C4 references, I saw this one image of basically a C4 that had a toxic chemicals that was attached to the back or the side of it, and I thought that was really cool. I just wanted to add that to this model, I thought it would just add a lot to the scene. So I'm just going to create another cylinder, just basically size that to fit on the very top of the C4 packages, and I can just create some other low poly pieces of tape similar to the other ones just so they're strapped on holding the tank to the side and then in Substance Painter we can add some cool labels or whatever on top. So let's go ahead and start blocking out that toxic chemical tank.
right, so the chemical toxic tank is attached to the C4. Now I just want to add another little small detail. I just want to have a little strip of duct tape that's attached to the corner of one of the C4 packages. And I'm just going to write some label on top of it in like marker or something. So let's go ahead using another plane. I'm just going to block out that shape. Alright, so the model is all wrapped up. Now I just want to quickly show you exactly how I did those UVs in Maya and how I just prepared everything to go into Substance Banner. So here's the model in its finished form. I ended up just grouping this into two different groups for the two different textures. So I have the C4 itself and then all the other objects. So for the C4, I just wanted the packaging to be really big on the UV map. So if I click on the checkered board, you see it just takes up quite a bit of space so I can have a lot of resolution in that texture. And then the second material was just, or the texture, just all the other objects in the scene, so the tape, the chipboard, and everything else. And I could probably combine this into one, but I thought why not just split it into two. So that is exactly how I prepped the model. So now let's jump into Substance Painter so we can start texturing. All right, so now jumping over to Substance Painter, I can go ahead and load in my FBX file from Maya. And once that FBX is loaded in, I just take a quick look to see how things are looking. And things are looking pretty good, so let's go ahead so we can bake out those textures. So I'm going to go over to the texture set settings, scroll down to bake mesh maps, and I can choose my output size. I chose 4K, and I just make sure to check on that use low poly mesh as high poly mesh, and then you can bake out your textures. Alright, so to start things off, I'm going to start with C4 packaging so we can start texturing that first and then move on to everything else. So to do this material, I thought I would experiment with a few different things. So as a base material, I ended up going with a leather creased material. And that way I can just kind of mess around with those settings afterward to refine that specularity of that reflective packaging. But I thought a leather would kind of be fitting for that C4 packaging that I had in my reference image. Now, to create all of those wrinkles, I ended up opening up one of those fabric linen crease materials, Smart Materials and Substance Painter, and I went ahead and just chose the pattern, that crease material that's inside of that folder. I basically copy that over to my leather crease folder that I created earlier. That way I can add those creases directly into that leather material that I created. So basically at that point, it's just a matter of messing around with the scale of the creases and how strong you want those creases to show and then changing the specularity of the material itself and just messing around with those settings until I find something I'm happy with. So I'm just gonna go dabble with these two textures and mess around with these settings a little bit until I find something that's just fitting closer to what I had in mind for the C4 package. Now, as you can see, the wrinkles are different on both of those C4s. So the right one, they're running horizontally, whereas the left one, they're running vertically. And that's just because of the orientation on the Mama UV map. So once I find something I'm happy with, with color and size of wrinkles, uh, all I'm going to do is just basically set that to a black mask and assign it to only one of the packages. Then I can duplicate that same material over and then change the rotation of those creases and assign it to the opposite one. Just that way the creases are running in the exact same direction.
All right, so the C4 packaging is looking pretty good. It was just bothering me a little bit, so I constantly come back and tweak things, but it's good for the time being. Let's just move on to start texturing a few of the other objects. So next up on the list was a piece of duct tape. And that's really simple. On the Substance Source website, they have a really great duct tape material that you can go download and add to your Substance library. And that's exactly what I did here. I first started off with applying that duct tape material to that mesh. And I started just experimenting a little bit. I didn't know if I wanted that look, so I ended up changing it over to just a plain gray material and adding some wrinkles to it, which I then end up removing completely and going back to the duct tape look. So if you're following along, I just didn't want to remove that since it's part of the process. And I didn't want to just take a chunk of the video out just because I was experimenting. So if you're wondering why, that's exactly what I do, but I do end up going back to the duct tape material. <laughs> So I thought it'd be pretty cool to create some extra creases that were basically directly below those pieces of tape that wrapped around the C4. So to do that, I'm going to use the exact same creases that I applied to my packages on the C4s. All I'm going to do is just duplicate those over and increase the intensity on them, and maybe scale them down a little bit just so I see some really dramatic creases on the material. And then all I have to do is just put that in its own folder, set that to a black mask, and then choosing a certain brush, whatever I thought was fitting. I can go paint those creases directly below those pieces of tape that are on my UV mat. That way it looks like there's some extra really stretched creases that are pulling from the tape that's wrapping around it. And then all I have to do afterwards is go in with my eraser tool and clean it up depending on how many creases I want to show around those pieces of tape. So let's go ahead and we can add those extra creases. Alright, so the C4 packages are looking a lot better, now it's time to move on to the other meshes. Alright, so next up is doing the label that's on this chemical tank, and to be honest with you, this is one area that I wish I spent a little bit more time. I probably could have jumped into Photoshop and created a really cool custom label, but just to make the video a little bit quicker, I thought I'd just do something directly here in Substance Painter with the built-in alpha. So all I'm going to do is just choose a square alpha and then basically just draw on a rectangle that's over top of the tank 
and then I can choose another alpha, it's one of the fonts that are come with Substance Painter, and I can just write on a warning label that's directly over top of that little rectangle we created. So let's go ahead and we can start creating this toxic chemical label. <laughs> Next up was just coloring all of those wires. So while I was applying those materials to these wires, I noticed how that blue wire was getting a little bit of that white material that was basically bleeding over into it. And that's just because if you look at my UV map, you'll notice how those UV shells are directly beside each other and there's no little small gap between them. So basically that color is just bleeding over into the other UV shell. So all I'm going to do is just quickly jump back into Maya. I can space those out just the tiniest little bit. And then when I reload it back into Substance Painter, you'll notice how that little white is not bleeding into the blue anymore. And that wire is looking like it should be. Alright, so I make a few changes to the wires afterwards, some of the colors, but it's looking good for now, so let's just jump on to the second texture. So what we're going to start off with is that tape material, and I'm going to use that duct tape material that I mentioned earlier in the video, and we're going to apply that to that tape mesh in our scene. I'm just going to change the color from that gray to a darker color and tweak some of those settings. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I really didn't know exactly how I wanted this to look, so I start off making this duct tape more of a gray, classic duct tape look, but I do end up changing it to a darker black later on. All 
Alright, so the tape material is applied to the mesh. Now we can jump onto all the other small objects in the scene. So I'm just going to go through the smart materials and apply various different materials to all these objects and just tweak some of these settings. So for the next little bit, I'm just going to let it play out as I apply all these materials to these meshes. Alright, so I thought it'd be pretty cool to add a few small glowing lights on my chipboard. So to do that, we first need to do a few small changes to our shader settings so we can add an emissive channel to that material. So to do that, we're going to go to the top right corner to our shader settings, switch our shader to alpha blending, and that's going to allow us to add an emissive channel. So if I scroll down and I hit that little plus icon, you'll see now I can add an emissive channel to this material. So all I have to do is go back to my layers, choose whatever material I want to assign to that mesh. Once I'm happy with it, I can go add that emissive channel to it and basically just change that emissive color depending on what color I want that light to show. And then in that shader settings, don't forget to just to crank up that slider, the emissive slider intensity, just so I can show that light depending on how bright I want that light to glow. So let's go tweak some of these settings till I find something that I'm happy with.
All right, so next up was doing the screen and those little digits that show up on top of it. So I thought it'd be cool to not only show the glowing numbers, but the little silhouette of the number eight that's below it, depending on basically what number is gonna show up on top of that. So a really quick and easy way to do that is I'm gonna choose a built-in alpha that's inside of Substance, choose one of the fonts that's fitting for those digits, one of those digital number fonts. And basically I'm just gonna use the number eight since that's the base for all of the numbers and I'm gonna print on four of those. And then I'm gonna create another layer on top of that that's gonna be a bright red glowing one. And I'm gonna just choose various numbers to paste directly on top of those number eights. Just basically so you can see what the numbers would look like or assume what they would look like in an off state. And then the glowing numbers will appear over top of them. So let's go add some numbers to the screen. And now just continuing on to add other materials to the last remaining meshes. Alright, so for this little smiley sticker, I just hopped on Google Images and found a smiley sticker that was fitting, or I thought would be fitting for the scene. Save that as an image, 
drag that directly into my scene, set that as a texture into the current session. And then basically all I have to do is just project this image of the smiley directly onto the mesh. So while zooming out and taking a look at my C4, I noticed how the packaging was looking a little bit too clean and I wanted to add a little bit of dirt or grunge on top of it. So a really quick and easy way to do that is adding a fill layer and then going over to my masks tab and depending on whatever grunge and dirt effect I want, I just click and drag one of those masks directly onto my fill layer. Then all I have to do is change that color of the fill layer depending on whatever grunge color I want that to show on my material and then just drag around those sliders depending on how much grunge I want to show on my C4 packaging. So let's go ahead and just tweak some of these settings until I find something I'm happy with. All right, so things are looking a little bit better. Now it's time to move on to that little duct tape label that's on the corner. So for this, I'm just gonna add a plastic material, set that to a black mask. Go ahead and choose one of the brushes that are inside Substance. So in this case, I chose a marker brush since I assumed it'd be a marker that was writing on top of this label. And I'm just gonna go write basically whatever I want on this label. Now, I was writing this with my mouse. And I didn't have my tablet hooked up or anything. So it was quite difficult to actually write something in handwriting with my mouse. I, actually much harder than I thought it would be. So I just take my time and slowly add the letters onto my label. So I thought it'd be pretty funny to write don't drop because it's more of common sense. Like you wouldn't want to drop the C4 package that's all wired up and ready to go. So I thought it would just be funny to add in. So let's go ahead and add this label. Alright, so that label will work. Let's just jump back to a few of the other materials so we can tweak some of those settings. Alright, so quickly jumping into the renderer, I'm just going to bring that floor height up to match the bottom of my model, and then I'm just going to change the environmental map, just go through a couple of the different lightings just to see what fits best with the model. And then while doing this, the incorrect things almost instantly jump out to me. So every time I quickly jump into the lighting and start looking at the model, I usually find it's pretty obvious the things I want to fix up right away. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to jump back into the editor and do a couple small tweaks to some of the settings. Alright, so things are looking a little bit better, just that chip guard material is looking a little bit too clean. So I'm just going to do the exact like I did to my C4 packaging. I'm going to add another fill layer, choose a mask, and I can add a little bit of dirt and grunge to that mesh.
And then same thing for the little battery, it's looking a little bit too plain, so I'm just gonna add a few small details to it. And while zooming out, I thought it'd be fun to add a little small message in the top left corner of the packaging. So I thought it'd be funny to add a little note to whoever is going to be holding it saying, remember to arm it. So just like we did that duct tape label, I'm going to do the exact same thing and add a little written message in the top left corner. Now quickly jumping back into the renderer to see how things are looking and once again I'm just going to go back into the editor and do a couple small tweaks to some of the colors and materials until I finally get something that I'm happy with. So I'm just going to speed up this next little bit as I go make these small little changes. Alright, that's basically everything. That is the whole texturing and modeling process that I did to create this C4 explosive. Thanks so much for tuning into this week's video. And if you liked the video, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more weekly 3D content. Also, if you'd like to support the channel even further, as well as get access to additional content, check out my Patreon page, which I will link in the description below. Alright, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll catch you guys in the next one.